What's up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here, and welcome back to my long-awaiting overdue album review for this segment of Classic Albums Revisited, which is a segment that I review one of my favourite albums of all time. And for today, since that I have mentioned this time and time again, I am here, finally, to do an album review on one of my most favourite albums of this legend, Neil Young, with the album entitled Freedom. Freedom is the 17th studio album by Neil Young. It came out October 2nd, 1989. This marks his return back to reprise records, just like his previous album, This Knows For You, which was released through a different sound of Neil's, and he was with a band called The Blue Notes with more of a rock and roll rhythm and blues oriented sound. Two songs that were recorded in 88 would be later on added for this album, and they are Crime in the City and Sunday. A few months prior to this album's release, Neil had released an EP called El Dorado, with three songs that would later on be included for Freedom, an extended version of Don't Cry, El Dorado, and a cover of On Broadway. Neil explained the wide array of music in this album. I knew that I wanted to make a real album that expressed how I felt. I just wanted to make a Neil Young record per se, something that was just me, where there was no persona, no image, no distinctive character like the Blue Notes guy or the guy in Everybody's Rocking. It's the first time I've felt like doing an album like this in years. The album released one single for this album, the infamous Rocking in the Free World, on November 14th. And when it came out, it did receive a lot of positive reviews. Many cited it later on as one of Neil's best albums across his discography. Freedom was one of the later Neil Young albums that I always have been absorbing and resonating with for so many times because... This was one of those first few albums when I was listening to his work that for me personally has made a big impact. As much as I have loved After the Gold Rush to Tonight's the Night, etc., I personally think that Freedom is severely underrated and that I have actually mentioned this album previously on the second part of a video that I had done on albums that I consider to be underrated classics. After the very small stint of Neil's career through Geffen Records, releasing maligned and not as well received albums like Everybody's Rocking and Landing on Water, etc., Neil's return back to reprise records for me is an absolute great return to form here because. When I listen to Neil's 70s stuff, like from his later heyday on albums like After the Gold Rush and Harvest, etc., Freedom to me is not only one of my favourite comeback albums of all time, but this is one album from Neil which I do specifically defend as one of his most greatest accomplishments as his returning to the music that we always know and love. Freedom does capture the reputation that it does continue to create. The more I listen to this record alone, from start to finish, including the electric version of Rocking in the Free World, it always amazes me that not a lot of the people do really dive into a lot of the material that was all over across this album because a lot of people will always know Rocking in the Free World but there are some essential highlight moments from these later tracks as soon as you would listen to this album and pay very close attention. The acoustic version of Rocking in the Free World is as mesmerizing as it gets. This was recorded live but the third verse that we later know from the electric version was not written and you can immediately feel and hear the difference when you listen to this acoustic different separate version. It has been 
a very mellowed but yet moodier sound. The way that this this picture of imagery and these words were crafted, but with a lower tuning. I absolutely love this version of Rocking in the Free World, especially when you can hear the crowd chanting and singing away when Neil commands the audience to join along with him. What an absolute classic this song has been! But if you really want to hear this live acoustic feeling of this political emotion, then definitely check this one out, and you will not miss this one. Not one second of it. Crime in the City, the second track, the longest song on here, is almost nine minutes of complete brilliance. The structure when I listen to this is kind of like the repeating pattern of All Along the Watchtower by Bob Dylan, and just like Rocking in the Free World, Crime in the City is very dark in its own. Premise and there's a lot of these imageries and visions from what Neil decided to write home about here. Verse sections about cops to gang violence and later verses go on and make references about you know working with separate producers and making his own way of attacking the music industry. But the later verses like. The fourth verse, for example, is one of my favourite moments because if you listen and look back to the past that Neil went through, the fourth verse is exactly what you would really think about for personal struggles. Later, wise Neil, in his earlier life, had become very, very much alone because his parents were separated, and you can listen closely and pay attention. To these lyrics, the desperation and the difficulty that he was really going through, but what also stands out as beautifully as it does grow is the instrumentation itself. The saxophone playing was exquisite, and the rhythmic pattern driving material later haunting soundscapes in these electric guitar distortions, but the quietness to the Presentation and the overall source of what makes this song so powerful in itself is the overall story. The story into the separate verse sections have been traumatized from Neil's experiences, but it was wonderfully contrasted into one of my favorite songs ever on this album. And Crime in the City is. An outstanding piece of work. Then we go into some of the later tracks, like a few which features Linda on guest backing vocals. And when I listen to tracks like "Hanging on a Limb," to "The Ways of Love," and even with hearing both Neil and Linda together, these two songs were extraordinary. I absolutely adore hearing both of them together. Hanging on a limb is just as very innocent and super sweet. The continuation of Neil's progression as a musician, like when you listen back to Comes a Time, which is another classic album by itself, Linda and Neil singing along with these surreal, gorgeous beauties of the pair of them together. Is so so good. I always admired hearing, listening to these types of tracks on this album. Just like when I listen to some of the ballads from Comes a Time, you know, like the title track to Already Won, Field of Opportunity, the cover of Four Strong Winds, to really think that that feeling, that emotional attachment, still resonates with me, and tracks like. Again, hanging on limb and the ways of love, they are severely underrated. It's touching sounds. The ways of love is to me as brutally not as well known, but this is another one of my highlights on this record. The shuffling pattern on the drums to the acoustic playing in these multiple 
fragments of guitar sections, the whole folky, adventurous vibes. It is a classic. The Weight of Love is one of my other high favourites. And as well as El Dorado. El Dorado, just like with Crime in the City, is intensifying. Presents a very dark scene on fighting at a villa. You know, references to gambling in a hotel, to a drug deal and a bullfight. The whole pain and anguish in Neil's voice was heavily projected. And what is also staggering across this track alone is the brutality in the softness and these explosions of jump-scared, motioned bangs of his assaulting electric guitar fuzzy goodness. El Dorado is one of the most powerful songs. This is another one that I definitely will recommend for any listener alone. In terms of one of the other haunting to intense and dramatic performances, like some of the stuff in his earlier work, El Dorado is a must listen. Someday is one of the later tracks when it immediately makes me think of Bruce Springsteen. Some of the songs on this album have that heartland rock feel, but someday every single time when I listen to this song makes me think about Bruce Springsteen because of these tingles from the pianos to saxophones connecting together with the music and these chants, something so unique to me. And there are a few lyrical references on praising the Lord and the Alaska Pipeline to fueling cars. One of my other favourites is the cover of On Broadway. But the way Neil decides to do this and get away with it, he just destroys it. But in a good way. Not that destroying it to make On Broadway, you know, not as great and just be a wall of noise. The way Neil does it on this track alone makes On Broadway like a completely separate but destructive nature. You can hear the distorting, assaulting tones from Neil's way of playing and the simplicity, the exploding, crunchy, over-the-top and this bombastic wall of noise is just so awesome. I love hearing the abruption into mentality when his guitar sounds like the, that he was, you know, about to break the shit out of his guitar and, you know, his amplifier. Like on the finale section, right at the end of the song. Say what you say about it. On Broadway has always been a great song, but when Neil decides to, you know, make a separate landscape but in a heavy way possible this is one of my favorites on the record the ballad of wrecking ball if you know wrecking ball from emmy lou harris's version which is much more popular than this song neil did write this and it's another love song feel so mesmerized with this song it's comfortable it is so smooth and you know gentle and if you look at one of the lines in the second verse saying, I've seen that look before, shining from star to star, that is a nod to one of his greatest songs of all time that he ever wrote called Like a Hurricane that was written back in the mid 70s. And just like with the looping way on crime in the city structure wise, Wrecking Ball is pretty much like that. The piano playing from Neil's own fingers, hearing these lovely chords that just oozes in its crystal clear. And Wrecking Ball's own melodies were superb, terrifically sung in his breathy softness. I just can't believe that not a lot of people do know about this original version of Wrecking Ball which is insanity to me. As much as we all know and love 
Harvest Moon to The Needle and the Damage Done to Heart of Gold and Comes a Time. Even some of the stuff from Russ Never Sleeps like Pocahontas to Thrasher, Ride Alarma. There's not a lot of people that do talk about Wrecking Ball because when I listen to Freedom, Wrecking Ball is one of these later songs that always gets stuck here in my head. This is another masterpiece of a song. Out of all of the ballads, this is one of Neil's top 10 best, in my opinion. No More is one heavily, heavily dark song. A darker side into the struggles that Neil had been experiencing. If you look into these lyrics, when Neil was going into drug addiction, No More is a brave, brave song focused and intensifying listening experience. The sound of Neil's vocals on this track sounded fantastic here. It's like that he's on the edge of breaking down. If you love rocking in the free world, and like I said, crime in the city, No More is another one when you can really get into, because I can't always put into words that this is one of the strongest things Neil had ever written, especially after his stint into the rockabilly and the rock and roll period on, like I said, on Everybody's Rocking, so far and so forth. But I'm so thrilled that Neil is back with a vengeance around this time. And No More is one classic deep dive of a song. Too Far Gone is pretty much something like you would hear from comes a time that Neil would later on move forward into his folky movement, like what he did on Harvest, bring back on Harvest Moon, the album after Ragged Glory. The melody was lovely, especially in the chorus, and just the simple ways on these lyrics. The reference into Perfume, I smelled a bit, was little little cheesy. And obviously the album concludes with the electric version of one of his most popular songs of all time as a musician, Rocking in the Free World. And, you know, as much as I love the acoustic version, as I've mentioned it earlier in this review, the electric version is what most people get attached and feel, because this is as aggressive, it's angry. His huge fuck you to the presidency of George W. Bush at the time, Rocking in the Free World is still so relevant and as so vivid because it's straight to the point and his frenetic impromptu improvising whatever style guitar solo adds so much tension and drama into the chorus sections and when you listen to the weld live version on rocking in the free world he just annihilates it and that's another phenomenal live album of neil's that i do recommend Weld be my favourite live album of Neil's with Crazy Horse. But anyways, Rocking in the Free World is timeless, it ages so well, and what's there to be said in many more words? Overall, Freedom by Neil Young is a phenomenal album from start to finish. The saxophone playing was so outstanding, and as well as the drumming work from Chad Cromwell to... Ben Keith on the keyboards, and Rick Rosas on the bass, and even Frank Poncho, San Pedro, who worked with Neil when he was with Crazy Horse. They all did amazing jobs. But if you have not heard this album, I highly will recommend this. This album has been a huge favour for me, that I see it as one of my top ten, or maybe top five albums from his discography, period. So, we know tonight's the night, we know on the beach, to After the Gold Rush and Harvest, Harvest Moon, etc. But you need to dive in with this album, because Freedom is his most underrated classic album, and definitely seek this one out if you haven't already. Thank you guys for watching, and I will keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.